welcome to Furious Driving, and this is the final episode of Terry, the Minder Capri. Yes, it's done. If you cast your mind back to August of 2020, last year when this car made the headlines in every newspaper and on TV as the famous Minder TV car when it was engulfed in flame, coming back for an MOT of all things, where it had passed with flying colours, it just caught fire. But now this is the result of six months and 610 hours of hard labour here at Classic Car Restorations. That's not, that's a really shabby Subaru. Anyway, this now looks absolutely fantastic. Now looking at the front of the car now, it's got its face back, the new old stock plastic indicators, the new old stock headlights, this new old stock grille, all looks absolutely incredible. One of the saddest things to see originally when the car was first in the workshop was this, the indicator hanging by a thread of its wire drooping like a stalactite of melted blackened plastic. It was such a sad, tragic thing to see, and now it looks like a brand new face again. They've managed to retain as much as they possibly can to keep the originality. For example, these rubber strips are original to the car. They survived the fire incredibly. However, under the bumper, these incredibly rare spoilers are new. They're a new old stock are found in a shed somewhere, never fitted to a car, so they've been painted perfectly to match the rest of the bodywork. And so the thing is exactly as it was before the event. Now the difference between an average restoration and a great restoration is the last 10%. You know, the last 10% is the biggest 90% or whatever that phrase is, which I've completely forgotten. But it's the details that take the time. For example, these gold pinstripes took some of the four hours to apply. They're all around both sides of the cars. They follow the swage line in the middle of the car and all around the arches and this lower swage line as well on both sides of the car. That took a lot of doing to get exactly right. Now, Tony, who runs CCR, has been dealing with Fords, I think, since before I was born. But much of the credit for making this car as good as it is goes to his bodywork guy, Richard, who has done wonders with this thing, who has put a new bonnet on, new outer wings. That's basically all the new metal we had to put into the car, or they had to put into the car. Well, I'm not, I shouldn't be taking credit for this. But the alignment he's put on it is absolutely spot on. Just check out these shut lines. We talked about this in a previous video. This car is amazing. It's better than when it rolled off the production line. Now, perhaps the luckiest part of this entire story, and there are many, many lucky parts of this tale, is this interior, because this is the original interior that came with the car and was used during filming in the TV show. And the fire was creeping through the bulkhead. It was coming through these vents, blackening the windscreen, starting to melt out the dashboard. But that was when the fire brigade managed to uh, beat the flames back and stop the progress. So much of the interior has been saved. It's the original headlining, that never had to come out of the car. The seats and the seat fabric are original. This is the seat as sat in by Terry McCann and Arthur Daly himself. And this is the original carpet as well. The glove box had to be replaced, obviously. The instrument pod is still the same and they had to remake the wiring loom behind to make everything work. The reason the car was saved by the fire brigade because normally when a fire takes hold of a car you have a matter of minutes two or three minutes tops before the car is just absolutely destroyed but the Surrey fire brigade had been at a different fire they just loaded the truck up and were climbing back on board when the call came in car fire and it was literally a street away so they rushed around the corner and seeing what the car was they made an extra effort rather than just try and control the fire in an ordinary boring you know, SUV that would be no harm done if the thing was destroyed. They realized what this was and they went all out. I was gonna say guns blazing, but that's not exactly the right phrase, is it? Hoses blazing um, and got this thing under control, saved in a matter of moments. And so not only was the shell saved from being warped and distorted and that was savable, the interior wasn't destroyed either. So this is quite incredible. In terms of interior and instruments, this is a standard, unmodified, original Capri. We still have the medium wave, long wave radio here in the dashboard, the basic heater controls. The only options, that aren't even options, out of the four possible buttons here, we've got two blanking plates, rear wiper, rear screen heater, and that is very much a lot. Like on the Capri we reviewed not so long ago, actually, we've got uh, eight dials. The two outer ones on the left are the battery amps and the oil pressure. On the right-hand side, we've got our fuel gauge and water temperature. And in the center, a rev counter going to 7,000 RPM. 
and uh, our speedo reaching up to 130. We have this rather nice leather, sporty small steering wheel. It's quite an effort to turn the thing because there's no power assistance and there's a fair bit away from that, that um, four cylinder motor up front. Down in the centre we've got the analogue oval clock and of course we have the uh, rather nice easy to hold forward part spin handbrake which is the same as in Granada's and everything else really. Over on the doors we've got these very period looking almost add-on style speaker grills, the, the wind up windows with this little vinyl strip in the centre. So nostalgic for anyone who grew up in the 70s and 80s. Adjuster on the driver's mirror, but not on the passenger side one, and the little plastic door pull for the door handle. And of course lots of acres I would even go as far as to say. Black vinyl in the door card with little chrome inserts just to add some interest in there. Now check out this engine, the 2 litre Ford looks amazing, there's so many new parts under this engine bay, it is basically brand new. The block has been painted as original, stripped down new core plugs, everything rubber, everything plastic has been replaced. New old stock parts like radiator, new old stock brake components. This thing is a new car under here, it is astonishing. This airbox is, well I've not seen anything like this outside of Dagenham Motors in 1980. <laughs> pretty good so there we have it another quality motor from Arthur Daly this thing is phenomenal I am so impressed at how it has come back and so relieved as well that we now have another beautiful Mark II Capri back on the road again saved from the scrap heap as it so nearly could have been so Arthur Terry what's it like having the car back home again they're a bit quiet today, but as you can see, there's a bit more to this story which I couldn't leave untold. First of all, yes, the Capri is back home at last, safe in its garage and done. And it does look just astonishing. It looks even better away from the workshop in the real world at last. The white diamond white paint is just glowing. But here to my left, you may have noticed this Daimler. This is actually Arthur's car from the TV show as well. The two are part of a pair. This is an astonishing minder collection here. I won't say where we are obviously, but these two cars do live together in the same garage. They've been to shows together. And this behind me right now is actually Arthur's coat and hat from the TV show as well. So this is Arthur's actual Daimler, the Jag that he sat in. Drove around on set in the TV show showing 44,000 miles on the clock. The wood on the dashboard is still absolutely beautiful. Check out this brown leather interior. This is quite something, isn't it? Obviously the car has had a life since the TV show. This looks like an early 80s. This may well have been the one that was used when the car was being filmed. Automatic gearbox, obviously. Electric windows and electric sunroof condition of this car is absolutely beautiful. Your little electric doodar adjusters for the mirrors and the door. The door cards are fantastic as well. This whole car is actually really, really nice. Even if it wasn't a TV car, it would still be a really nice car to just cruise around in. The carpet's in great condition. This uh, centre console area is great. Interesting how the uh, layout of the instruments two small dials, volts, oil, speedo, taco, fuel and temperature, is actually the same as on the Ford. It's virtually the same instrumentation layout as in that other car. Here's the light control, cruise control. Very, very of its time. Does look good still. So here we have the 4.2 litre straight six in the front of the Daimler. One of the all-time classic engines. This thing does sound absolutely fantastic. So there's the startup exhaust sound on this car. Should be quite good with the uh, garage door behind it. Ah, oh, 
such a straight six sound. So crisp. Pure Jag. Or Daimler, obviously. So there we have it, the two cars are here together. Now this is an interesting collection that kind of happened almost by accident when the owner found the two of them together at auction about seven years ago. Like a lot of people, he was a Minder fan in the usual way that most of us, you remember the TV show, we remember watching it, I remember watching it with my parents. Um, and he got it and then got the bug. And so being a, a natural collector, went on from buying just the two cars to buying the coat, then all the other, other memorabilia. And this is quite a unique collection because this is all genuine stuff that has come from George Cole's family in many cases. So things like this cigar box, which is signed by his wife. This tie, which he's wearing in the photo next to it. Unrepeatable stuff. And this, this is probably an unrepeatable piece of memorabilia. This bottle of champagne, this bottle, bottle of bully, was given to George Cole by the producer on the release on TV of the first episode, Gunfight at the OK Laundrette. This is as about a unique a piece of memorabilia as you can imagine. And another piece of money can't buy memorabilia is this. This is George Cole's actual DuPont gold lighter, which he used never actually on screen, but always was in his pocket. You may notice he never actually lit a cigar on screen during the TV show. This has got George Colt and his address in Henley on Thames. This is the registration card and inside here we have the actual lighter engraved with his initials, which came from his family, from his wife Penny, after his death. So this is one of the most personal pieces of memorabilia you can have from the TV show. Now, I know a lot of you were expecting me to do a driver of this car today, and that is still on the card, but the owner, having been through, well, what we've been through, is understandably cautious right now, and the car has just come back yesterday from the body shop. That's the first time it's been on his drive. The wheel alignment still needs to be done to save those precious Cinturatos, and it's not even been taken off Sawn yet. So this is it, this is a fantastic end of the story. The car is done, it's back home with its owner, and with its stable mate, the, the pair are back together again. Back when we started this project, so many people were saying, it's never gonna happen, it can't be done, you're wasting your time. But no, it's been done, and it's been done beautifully. The fin and finish, let's be honest, it's better than Ford did in the first place now. So thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please do hit like and subscribe. I'll see you again next time with, I don't know what project we'll look at next. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.